head on Q2, lingering concerns after a stabbing at a crowded event at Metro Park. I'm very confident that we have a very secure, very good uh, facility down there. Friday stabbing with thousands of people inside the arena, now leading to more questions than answers. Plus, a 15-year-old believed to be behind a deadly shooting near South Park, now charged as an adult. And battle of the plans. Um, this is your chance. If you wish downtown had whatever it is that you've been dreaming up, uh, this program's for you. Downtown Billings seeking a new business through a unique competition. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Questions continue to swirl tonight over a stabbing at Metro Park on Friday that left one young man with serious injuries. The stabbing took place during the Southern Bee Basketball Tournament. County Attorney Scott Twido says the suspect is 15 years old and the victim is 18. Meanwhile, Yellowstone County Commissioner John Oslin says the incident happened inside First Interstate Arena and may be gang related. After the crime, Metro Park responded with added security, but now many are wondering why those procedures weren't in place before, most specifically using metal detectors. According to the county commissioners, while they have metal detectors on hand, it's up to the promoter, in this case the Montana High School Association, to ask for them. Any promoter that comes on, whether it's a high school association or anyone else, when they sit down with the Metro management and the event staff, and the marketing staff, they determine the level of security and all the other things that they want in their contract, and we'll provide that whatever level they want. We're going to have much more on this story coming up at 530. A 15-year-old boy says he's not guilty to shooting and killing a 17-year-old boy near South Park back in November. Corey Daniel Wolfname is being charged as an adult. Authorities say Wolfname's responsible for the shooting on November 3rd in an alley near South Park. The shooting left 17-year-old Vidal Yellow Robe dead. According to court documents, Wolfname and Yellow Robe arranged to meet to exchange $500 for a stolen handgun. However, guns were pulled and the teens began shooting. Yellow Robe was struck in the chest and later died at the hospital. A shepherd woman pled not guilty to charges of killing her ex-partner and the father of her child and then concealing the crime. 22-year-old Kennedy Egner is accused in the deadly shooting of 24-year-old Quaid Fluckinger early Wednesday at their home that they shared in Shepherd. First responders were originally told Fluckinger suffered from an overdose but then noticed a gunshot wound to his head. Egner letter admitted to the shooting during an argument. Officers found the gun hidden in the garage and the prosecutor said the two lived in that residence with their four-year-old daughter. Bond is set at $500,000. Pretty pleasant conditions today, but it was a little bit cooler than average, and we're not going to see a lot of change in that in the short term, especially as the clouds start to build in and bring a chance of some snow, mainly to the mountains. Could have some impacts there for the lower elevations, some scattered showers over the course of the next few days. But once we start getting a little closer to the weekend, the trend is going to be warmer and it's going to be drier. We're going to break down all of this for you in a few minutes with a complete forecast. Calling all entrepreneurs, Downtown Billings is looking for the next greatest business through a free competition where the winner gets cash. It's called Battle of the Plans and it's now open. To learn how successful it can be, I spoke to a previous winner. Here in Downtown Billings. Yeah, it was kind of the springboard for me. You'll find something moving. It'll be five years this down way. there. Something busy. You'll find something chic. Modern contemporary women's clothing store. And inside, owner Linda Brooks perfecting her hand-picked merchandise. I've always loved style and fashion. I mean, it kind of goes back to like 1996, and we had a new girl in class. And she walked in, and it was the first time I'd ever seen Doc Martens, and I was smitten. <laughs> Trained as a nurse, not as a businesswoman, something chic needed a monumental nudge. Always dreamed of like, it'd be so cool to, to own one myself, but... Really, it wasn't feasible to me, or I didn't even know how to go about it. So, enter the battle of the plans. <laughs> Phase one, submit your business concept, is now open. We hear all the time, like, I wish downtown had, and it's like dot, 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 and there's all these cool ideas for businesses. Time to turn that dot, dot, dot into something real. And Billings has so many entrepreneurs and people with great business sense, and um, this is your chance. If you wish downtown had 
whatever it is that you've been dreaming up, uh, this program's for you. At the end of the competition, two businesses could win $40,000. And with it, guidance and assistance with starting their business. We have about 30 plus businesses each year new to downtown and we just want to continue that. Brooks won the competition in 2017, but along the way had to prove herself, getting her startup cash first the hard way, working for it. I decided to go do travel nursing away from home. Went to Portland for three months, went to Denver for three months, and went to Pueblo, Colorado for three months, and I saved $25,000 in startup capital. As she looks ahead to what's next, she reflects on the distinctive journey she had to take to get here. I do think the journey of how long it took me is what I needed to prepare me for this. Brooks tells me she plans to enter the battle of the plans this year too to expand her business model with a men's store in the downtown Billings corridor. There's a new man in charge of Fort Harrison's 103rd Public Affairs Detachment Unit. And tonight, we're learning this unit has a unique role in the Montana National Guard. MTN's Cindy Sentlafonte explains. Giving you the patch. So On Sunday, Fort Harrison saw a change of command for the 103rd Public Affairs Detachment, otherwise known as the PAD. The outgoing commander, Captain Ham. Captain Jonathan Ham served two years as their commander of the 103rd PAD, but this weekend he relinquished his command and handed the responsibility over to First Lieutenant Gunnar Booz. I had the privilege and honor of assuming command of the 103rd Public Affairs Detachment. Captain Ham originally enlisted in the Montana Army National Guard in 2010. He also graduated as a commissioned officer from Carroll College just a couple years later. Since then, he has added a number of achievements to his military career. But he says he is ready for the change and it is all about being Montana National Guard strong. I will be moving on to the regional support group in Butte as a logistics officer. Incoming Commander First Lieutenant Booz is no stranger to taking command. After commissioning through the University of Montana Reserve Officer Training Corps, he shortly thereafter deployed to the Middle East. There, as a platoon leader with Team Apache in 2022, he led 54 patrols in support of Operation Inherent Resolve in Syria. He says he hopes to bring not only leadership to his new post, but also transparency and strong communication. We'll be working closely with the State Public Affairs Office. Um, so a lot of that is a joint thing. Um, the mission of the PAD is more to collect um, materials and produce products based on what the National Guard is doing in the state and then working with the State Public Affairs Office to release that. The 103rd PAD was originally designated as an information detachment and began its history in 1976. It was instrumental to the founding of the Montana Military Museum in 1984. They also deployed in support of Operation Desert Storm in 1990. Present day, the PAD is responsible for traveling across the world to document Montana soldiers and tell the Army story. Within our branch, uh, we have a motto, Strength Through Truth. So we're absolutely here to tell the Army story. The Supreme Court says former President Donald Trump can stay on the Colorado ballot surrounding his conduct during the January 6 riots. The ruling sets precedents for other states trying to use the 14th Amendment to disqualify Trump from running for president. Skylar Henry reports from the Supreme Court. The nation's highest court handed former President Donald Trump a unanimous victory, ruling that Colorado cannot keep him off the ballot for the 2024 presidential election. The rationale here really is we don't want states to be able to do this. At issue was a narrow Colorado Supreme Court decision in a case brought by voters arguing Trump should be removed from the state's ballots because he committed insurrection on January 6th and was disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which states no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office who took an oath and then engaged in insurrection. Those who violated their oath to the Constitution once before will do it again and even worse if they're allowed back into power. But during oral arguments in early February, the justices seemed skeptical whether states can use the obscure constitutional provision to kick Trump off the ballot rather than leaving it up to Congress. 
The court didn't weigh in on whether January 6th was an insurrection or whether former President Trump engaged in it. The justices instead focused on the structural issue, whether courts can go out on their own and enforce this Civil War era provision, and the unanimous answer was no, they cannot. Without Congress helping us figure out who engaged in an insurrection, whether or not there's there's a problem, whether or not um, somebody has been found liable, guilty, whatever it is, it's not up to one state to do it. Congress needs to set the rules here. The current GOP presidential frontrunner cheered the Supreme Court's decision. You cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that, and the Supreme Court saw that. Trump still faces criminal cases surrounding the events of January 6th. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. People living close to massive wildfires don't just have their physical health to worry about. Their mental health is also at risk. A new study looked at more than 7 million Californians who live close to 25 large wildfires between 2011 and 2018. Researchers found a statistically significant increase in orders for antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and medicines to reduce anxiety. Research also says wildfires can increase the risk of post-traumatic stress disorder, and sleep problems. Well, as Montana prepares for its wildfire season, the Bitter National Forest is looking to hire more wildland firefighters. From today until the 15th, the Bitter National Forest will accept applications for new firefighters. They're looking to add more entry level and permanent positions. No experience is required and the positions have paid training and travel and benefits. Still ahead on the MTN 430 News on Q2, dual sports stars. The Powell boys basketball team taking lessons learned on the diamond to gain success on the hardwood. We'll head to Wyoming and hear from them in just a bit. But up next, a rather calm day outside right now. But what is the rest of the week looking like? Ed will let us know right after this.